A very warm welcome to this exclusive uh, show where I'm going to interview no other than the uh, head of the state of India, the uh, President uh, uh, Shri Pranab Mukherjee. Uh, I'm really honored to uh, have this uh, interview with Mr. President. Well, uh, sir, first of all, I would like to thank you for this uh, uh, rare and exclusive interview for us and also inviting us all the way from Timpu to New Delhi. Well, uh, my first question is a uh, very obvious one, Mr. President. Uh, what is the purpose of your visit to Bhutan? I mean, uh, you could have chosen any of the countries uh, in the region. Does it indicate uh, ever-growing relations between the two countries now? Thank you very much for coming all the way from Thimpu to Delhi to have interview with me. Bhutan is a special to India and our relationships grown over the years, culture, history, which we share. And in the subsequent years, all the kings, Druk Galpo, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, they have built up our relationships and based it on a very solid foundation. You have asked me why I have chosen Bhutan as my destination of foreign visit. Of course, I could have chosen any other country, but as I mentioned, we have special relationship with Bhutan which cannot be compared with other. It is reflected by the first foreign visit of Bhutanese Prime Minister, Tobhi, after his election. Delhi was his destination. Similarly, after the assumption of office by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, his first foreign visit was Bhutan. As I mentioned, over the years, we have built up this relationship and it is unique. Mr. President, uh it is often described that Bhutan-India relationship is exemplary. And sometimes uh, it is also uh, felt uh, it is rhetoric. No, I do not consider it is rhetoric. It is really exemplary. The cooperation which we have with Bhutan and the close intrinsic relationships of our common security common approach of helping our people, common objective to share experiences, resources, expertise with each other to help each other has placed it in a unique position. We are participating in the developmental projects of Bhutan. There is no conditionality. We also enjoy a very close ties of friendship at the highest uh, leadership level. How have the personal relations uh, and the close ties of friendship uh, among and between the leaders of the two countries helped strengthen the uh, relations between the two countries? Of course, the mutual trust, confidence, acquaintance, intimacy amongst the leaders help to build up the closer relationship and it gets reflected in various facets of activities, economic cooperation, political cooperation, strategic cooperation in large number of areas. And also, if any problem we are to face in future, 
whether it is <laughs> emerging from the domestic arena or it is emerging from the external sectors. We always share our perceptions, discuss, dialogue and find out that we can address the problems collectively, keeping the mutual interests of each other. Uh, on more personal note, uh, we were informed that you enjoy a very special friendship with our fourth king. How would you describe that? I do not know how to describe it, but to be very frank, practically during the latter part of His Majesty's rule in Bhutan, I was also in public life nearly more than four decades I have spent as member of parliament, government of India's minister, starting from Srimuthi Indira Gandhi to Dr. Manmohan Singh. I have served all the Congress prime ministers in different capacities. His Excellency, His Majesty the Fourth King, also came to India many times. I visited Bhutan several occasions and over these years discussing, sharing common perceptions. If I say so, it would not be wrong that I have developed a close personal relationship with His Majesty. Not only His Majesty the Fourth King, but even the present King, His Majesty, because I saw him so young when he used to accompany his father. Since then I have seen him, how he has developed. Even my wife, my daughter, my family members, they have visited on the invitation of the royal family several times since the days of fourth king. So, I must admit that I am fortunate to have this personal relationship with the royal family of Bhutan. Your Excellency, uh, when was the first uh contact uh, that you have had with His Majesty the Fourth King and particularly do you remember any incidents uh, that uh, took you closer to His Majesty the King? You know as I was Minister of the Government of India for a very long period of time and most of the times I have I served in the economic ministries either in the Planning Commission or in the Finance Ministry or in Defence Ministry. So, in each ministerial activities, I have come across His Majesty, the Fourth King, and particularly determining the plan assistance. As you were aware from the very beginning, first plan of Bhutan, India has provided assistance, the joint projects which we have undertaken, especially in the hydroelectricity, that has also brought close intimacy between us and the remarkable role which His Majesty played in weeding out a section of the extremist groups, Alpha, which took shelter in Bhutan in 2003, though I was not in government at that point of time. But every Indian felt highly indebted to him. Naturally, when we came to government immediately after that, this cooperation has been further strengthened through various stages. It is not one or two events. 
It is multiple events. At the leadership level, we enjoy very close ties of friendship. How would you describe people-to-people -people contact between the two countries? You know, we are very close. Currently, more than 4,400 students are studying in India. Almost three fourths of the Bhutanese students, student population are studying in India. I am not merely talking of education. A large number of the Bhutanese persons, they have been trained industrialists, civil servants, technocrats, teachers, doctors, engineers. So, people-to-people -people contact, apart from our bondage through great Buddhism, India is the land of Buddha, and Bhutanese are worshipper and believer in Buddhism. Apart from that religious, cultural bondage over the years, over the centuries, in modern, contemporary period, in all these activities, we have close relationship with people to people. And I am confident that if we have more communication, currently communication is little difficult. And that's why I am hoping that when direct flight from Bombay to Paro will start, large number of tourists and other type of persons will be coming and going. India provides, I think, about 60% of the tourists to Bhutan. And we also receive a large number of Bhutanese people, I mean stars, on different occasions, including for the purpose of tourism. And moreover, we have experienced, especially during the period of His Majesty the Fourth King, a unique transformation of Bhutan. India believes in democracy, rule of law, people's right. And I saw in my own eyes how an absolute monarch voluntarily abdicating his power, encouraging people to participate in democracy, brought a beautiful constitution. And before drafting that constitution, King resorted to an exemplary mechanism by consulting large number of people. Therefore, bringing an excellent constitution, giving right to people, voluntarily abducting his power as absolute ruler, and very successfully conducting two elections, and where multi-party government has been established, not one-party government. Therefore, all these have close impact and influence of our, the people between these two countries. Uh, Excellency, moving on to politics, uh, India is the largest democracy in the world. Bhutan is an emerged, uh, emerging democracy. What would your opinion be on how and where Bhutan is uh, moving particularly? What you just said, uh, I believe you are indicating that Bhutan is uh, going on the right track. Awila. The track is to be chosen by every country itself. The path which they will like to follow, it is for the people. And of course, in Bhutan, the enlightened monarch, under whose guidance they are transacting their business, it is for them to decide. But the way the Bhutanese people and its establishment have behaved, it clearly demonstrates 
that democracy has taken deep root, though it is young, though it is emerging, but it has taken deep root in the mind of the people. Yes, yes. Excellency, India is a growing uh, global power and we are very happy to see uh, that India assumes its rightful place in the global uh, arena. Now, uh, how might this benefit Bhutan? Of course, with the growing strength of India, Bhutan will also get the benefit of it because we want to share it with others. We believe development together. We believe no country in the world today can prosper in isolation. It will have to be prosperity for all. It will have to be development for all. If India has more income, naturally a part of it will be given, devoted to the developmental activities of Bhutanese people. If India develops more expertise, technology in different areas, healthcare, education, that will benefit the people of Bhutan because our relationship is so close and intimate and closely interlinked. We cannot think in isolation, though it is a sovereign country, but we do feel that we are not only neighbors, as I mentioned earlier, our relationship is special. If Bhutan prospers, I feel delighted because I will be benefited. If India prospers, naturally Bhutan will feel glad, happy, that Bhutan will be benefited by this prosperity. This is the type of relationship we have. Excellent cooperation is in Heidel power because this is the unique one. Today, nearly 1,000 crores of rupees Bhutanese exports are from power. Now, additional power generation capacity through a three mode which will be completed by 2018, that will also give additional revenue and additional export earning. Yes. Therefore, and it is an unique cooperation. This type of, there is no conditionality. There is no concept of donor and recipients. Our relationship is totally dependent on mutual trust and confidence and understanding and friendship. Excellency, uh, the democracy is an ideal uh, concept of governance. But the thing with the democracy uh, is every five years the government would change and entire leadership would change. So uh, how would such a change in India impact uh, Bhutan? You have noticed, say for the last 20 years, 30 years, from 1990s, there had been several governments in India. Congress government, left front led coalition government, BJP government, Again, Congress-led coalition government and now BJP government. But there is no change because relationship with Bhutan, it cuts across the party line. There is a broad consensus. There is a broad consensus among Indian political parties about our foreign relations. But especially in respect to our special relationship with Bhutan, there is broad consensus and almost unanimity that we must maintain this special relationship. Therefore, it is no wonder that our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, decided 
to by inviting all the sart leaders in his swearing in ceremony he conveyed the message that he wants to build up close relationship with all the sart countries by choosing bhutan as his first destination to foreign in foreign visit he conveyed this session this message that bhutan has a special place in india therefore you can safely say that democracy means change political parties ruling classes they change that is the beauty of democracy but basic fundamental policies over which there is broad consensus those policies do not change uh, mr president as uh, you have worked in finance and also you uh, probably would be expert in economics so uh, if you are to give an advice to bhutan to take care of the economic health what would that be now in what way bhutan would like to develop its economy primarily it is it will have to be decided by their parliament under the guidance of his majesty the king but this much i can tell you we have such an excellent relation and we understand each other's views so closely that whenever we find we end immediately enter into dialogue discussion and resolve try to resolve any outstanding issues India Bhutan relationship would be considered as the model relationship amongst the neighbors because we do not have as i mentioned the concept of giver and recipient taker it is not relationship it the relationship is of the partnership with the objective of development together prosperity together moving forward together and there each and every one is equal partner nobody is big nobody is small and that's why we have sustained our relationship over a very long period of time and i'm quite confident that this is understood understood and appreciated by the rulers of both the countries So on that note uh, well uh, mr president i would like to thank you very much for your time and i would also like to uh, wish you a very uh, uh, safe journey to bhutan and i hope you will enjoy your thank you very there. much and through you i would also like to convey my best wishes to the people beautiful people of bhutan and also to the government and the monarch his majesty the king her majesty the queen and the other members of the establishment thank you